Hello again, everybody, and welcome to a bit of an impromptu version of On the Range today. The uh, episode that I was working on, I got the bright idea that I needed to build a spreadsheet for it, so that's going to delay things a day or two as I tweak and perfect it. But I'm going to fill the gap by covering another A10 Warthog system, and that's the electrical power system in the A10. So let me go ahead and just go through a brief description of how electrical power systems and aircraft work, and specifically in the A10. Now, the power is going to come off of two generators. It's the left and right generator, and you can see the switches for those right there, left AC gen and right AC gen. And those generators are mounted out on the right and left engines. Those generators provide power to electrical buses on the aircraft, and think of those as just uh, essentially sources of power that provide electricity to different systems on the aircraft. Now, in general, there are left and right buses on the A-10. The left buses connected to the left AC generator. The right buses connected to the right AC generator. You can further subdivide the buses down into essential and, I guess, normal buses. But you have essential buses that get a little bit more priority and have a little bit more redundancy and backups uh, built into them, as we'll see once we get into the a little bit more here. So, I mean, those are the, really the basics. So we have all these systems in the aircraft, all the panels, all the switches, all the weapons out on the wings, the engines, just everything in the aircraft drives power from those left and right generators and the power is distributed through these buses that distribute power out to the different systems. And the different systems are going to be connected to, to different buses just to distribute the load evenly and to build in a little bit of fill safe and a little bit of redundancy so that you don't have all your eggs in one basket and have all the essential systems or all your systems connected to the same source of power. So that's a very very basic and broad description of an overall aircraft and uh, that could apply to any aircraft not just the A-10. That's a very broad description of any electrical power system and my apologies to any A uh, A-10C E and E troops out there. I know I am going to miss some details here that are pretty important but now to get into specifically how it works in the A-10, I think the best way to describe this is just to go through the startup procedure and show what happens as we uh, get into the weeds of it. So beginning right now in a cold uh, cockpit start, now there is actually power applied to a little bit of the aircraft and that's coming off of what's called the battery bus. And the battery bus is providing power as we speak to some uh, very basic systems. Uh, essentially just what you would need to get access to the cockpit. So for example, if I, you know, I can close and open the canopy and it's uh, driving power and getting power off the battery bus. So that's one thing that in the aircraft is always on. I could also extend the boarding ladder and retract it and I don't know if, if I looked around something else would probably occur to me, but yeah, right now the only power to the aircraft is coming off of the battery bus. Now I'm going to begin by turning the battery switch to the power position and uh, that's going to apply DC power to the essential DC bus. And I should also point out that there are two types of electricity applied in the A-10, or any aircraft for that matter. You have direct current, which is DC, and you have alternating current, which is AC. So depending on what the system is, you know, some systems and some instruments use AC power, some instruments and some systems use DC power. AC being what you would normally expect if you have like something you plug into your wall at home. Chances are it runs off of AC power, and if you have something that runs off of battery, chances are it runs off of uh, direct current, DC power. But um, right now, with the battery switch on, I have power applied to the A-10's DC direct current essential bus. So I do have limited capability right now, but all that I really get from doing that are just very, very essential systems. Just enough to get an engine started and to get power onto the main generators. And this is, you know, it's going to be what I use to start the aircraft up, or if I were in the air and I lost power to my generators, this would provide me a backup capability so that I would have a little bit of power on the battery to use to get the either the APU up to provide some, some electrical power or to get the engines and the normal generators back up and running. Okay, so if I go to inverters to standby, now with the inverter switch to standby, now I have AC power onto the AC essential buses. So again, that's just a sort of a backup capability 
the DC gets me just enough to start the engines. The AC also just gives me enough to monitor essential systems and to do essential tasks. Like right now in this configuration, I can start the engine, start the APU. I could, I uh, believe, you, yeah, the uh, UHF radio was on the essential bus, so I can run it. I also have my flight instruments. Some of them are up and running, like my airspeed indicator and altimeter and just basic flight instruments, uh, basic engine instruments are up and running. Just an example, I can turn on my, like, okay, I'll turn on my flight instruments, I'll turn on my engine instruments, and you can see that I have the lights on on those. That's because they're on the AC Essential bus, but you can see if I try that with the auxiliary instruments, which are not on that AC Essential bus, then I don't get any lighting from that one. So that's just an example of how that works. Okay, so at this point, I have just enough power on the aircraft to get the engine started. So what I need to do is, I'll go ahead and go APU to start, and get the auxiliary power unit up and running. Now what the APU is going to give me in the context of the electrical system on the aircraft is an APU generator. And this is another kind of redundant system that's on the aircraft that when I put the APU generator switch to power, and that's after the APU is up, up and running at uh, uh, full RPM, when I put the APU generator switch to power, that is then going to apply uh, AC power to all of the buses on the aircraft. So it's going to apply power to the uh, central buses, non-essential buses, everything on the aircraft, except at a reduced load. You won't get as much electrical capability out of the APU generator as you will from the uh, from the uh, normal left and right AC generators on the engine. And how it works is Okay, let me describe this. Okay, with the battery, we had direct current. With the inverter on, it's drawing DC power off of the battery and converting it to AC electricity. Now with the APU generator, I'm going to turn it to on. Okay, now the APU generator is now powering everything on the aircraft. But now, okay, the question is, the APU generator generates AC power. How is it providing DC power? And that's because it's using a converter to convert the AC power to DC power. And if you look at the well, little lights here, let me kick that off real, real quick. You can see the left and right converter lights right there. That's what is actually transferring or transforming everything from AC to DC. So I've got AP June power on, and now I have both AC and DC power on the aircraft. And also with the APU generator switch on, even though I still have the inverter switch to standby, the inverter is really no longer powering any of the instruments. It's all coming off of the APU generator at this time. Okay, so as we get things built up here, you can see more and more of the levels of levels of redundancy as we come in. And I don't even yeah even yet I don't have the primary power generation uh, generators up and running. So to do that, let me first get my left generator running by starting my left engine. So I'll just pull my left throttle out of the cutoff. And I will close the canopy to cut down on some noise. Okay, so now as my left engine RPMs come up, and I forget the exact RPM, I think it's 42% engine RPM, then my left generator and I'll go ahead and put these switches to on, that's the position they start in. Then my lift generator is going to kick in and start providing power to the aircraft. And you'll see that happen when the left gen light goes off. And I'll also get a caution and warning that's telling me that the lift generator is picking up the load and that automatically kicks off the APU generator. So you see my lift gen light go out and my APU gen light come on. And what happened there was that when the lift generator picks up the load, now it's the generator from the engine that is powering everything on the aircraft. At that point, the APU generator is kicked offline, and really, the APU generator is only going to kick in if I turn the left AC generator switch back to off. See, now it's back on the APU generator power. I go left AC gen back to on, and now it's running off of the left AC gen off the engine exclusively. I mentioned earlier that the left and right generators are connected directly to the left and right uh, buses on the aircraft. But as long as you have one of these generators up and running, it will provide power to both the left and right bus. They are tied in together. 
So even though they're primarily there to distribute the load evenly across left and right, if one generator, like in this case the right generator, is not up and running, if one generator is offline, the other generator does pick up the load, but at, again at a reduced capability. Okay, so now let me get my right generator up and running, and I'll do that by pulling my right throttle out of cutoff and getting my right engine started. And again, once the right engine comes up above, I think it's 42% RPM, don't quote me on that or anything, uh, then the right generator is going to kick in, and then I'm going to have power coming off of my uh, left and right generators. And that's the, I guess, the primary, that's, that's the way it should be. So even though at this point I have my APU generator switch on, nothing is actually being distributed from the APU generator. That's just there as a backup. Even though I have my inverter switched to standby, nothing is actually coming off of the inverter and the battery. That's just there as a backup. And even though my battery power switches to on, all the DC power for the aircraft is coming off of the generators, and the power switch is just left on to leave the battery in the loop to recharge the battery, and also to act as a backup. So now you can see that I have my left and right gen lights off. That means that my left and right AC generators are up and running and providing power to all the stuff on the aircraft. And I'm going to turn my EPU generator off. And now I'm in the basic configuration and ready to fly. So that's a very, I don't know, kind of detailed, but then again, kind of basic. Uh, power distribution and the power systems in the aircraft are very, very... A simple concept in theory, but not so simple when they break and you have to go out and figure out what's wrong. They are very, very complicated when you get into the nuts and bolts of it, but that is the part of it that really applies to you as the A-10C pilot employing the aircraft in the air. So, I think I'll explore the rest of it when I get into emergency procedures and show you what all everything means when you start losing power. But, one last demonstration, because this is neat. But, okay, at this point, I lose my AC generator power, okay, but the right generator kicks in, so you can still that I see that I still have power on the aircraft. Now, let's just say that I lose both engines and my right generator goes out. Now you can see as I look around the aircraft that I've lost power to a lot of the systems, and you would have been able to see that a lot more if I had, you know, had more stuff up and running. You can see all the caution and warning lights that come on that tell me that I've got no power now on my uh, left and right normal buses. All I have now is power coming off the inverter and the battery to my essential buses. So in this state, I still have that backup cap capability. I'm still able to fly the aircraft, but at this point, I, I need to start thinking about ways to get power off of one of these generators onto the aircraft. So, but thanks again. It's an obscure topic, but I think it's interesting. And it's little stuff like that that you see modeled in an aircraft that really makes you appreciate the, the attention to detail in these sims. So, hey, thanks again for watching. And I hope you did enjoy it. I will see you next time.